Hey guys, welcome back to class and here is your supply list for the day so that you can get started and have everything you need to try out these oil pastels on your very first drawing. We're gonna keep it really simple, but we're gonna jump right in. Let's get started by drawing an anchor line, which is a vertical and a horizontal in the middle of our paper and then a corresponding anchor line on our reference paper, just to get the underdrawing as close to being proportional as possible. Hold it by the eraser. That way you keep this drawing really light. You don't want big, dark, harsh lines outlining your drawing, because the oil pastel will mix with those and it'll make it dirty and ruin your color. And this is gonna be nice and bright. Okay, I'm just gonna sketch the basics. I don't need every little detail or every little color value change. I just need like, some guidance as I draw this. Horizon line here, and I'm just gonna map out or block in the cast shadow about where it's gonna go. And then just to be sure that I don't have graphite mixing up into my yellow, I'm gonna use my kneaded eraser and just kind of scrub over my underdrawing anywhere where I feel like there's excess graphite that can go. I'm just gonna roll it over there and get rid of it. And I'm gonna start with light colors, even though it's got a little color on it. So if you had that happen, just wipe it off. On, oh gosh. Well, they snap pretty easily. They're really soft. So clean them off on some tissue. Make sure they don't have any other colors on them that you don't want to accidentally mix in with your others. So I'm going to add yellow underneath the majority of this pair. Even though I see other colors in the darker side, yellow is going to be an undertone. So I'm going to use it as a foundation. I'm just using it almost just like a crayon, just kind of layering on there. You can see I'm, I'm a little lighter as I get to that shadow, want a little less yellow. And I'm gonna switch yellows and put a little more yellow on there. It's pretty safe. I'm experimenting with color. These oil pastels are made to be layered. They're made to be blended and mixed and smeared. So have fun with them. I'm following the reference, but my reference is really just a recommendation. It's not really the end all be all. So keep that in mind as you're working. Just adding a little orange now. I'm, I'm working from light to dark because I know how this media operates. It kind of behaves a certain way and it's easier to cover up light colors with dark than vice versa. So if I want to play it a little bit safe, I'm going to keep everything on the bottom layer on the foundation is going to be my light colors. And then I can always build. And if I hate it, I can scrape it off. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Let me go ahead and tell you the first way to blend. The first and easiest way to blend, I think, is just using your finger. Make sure your finger is clean. I will often forget and use my finger again after I've already used a different color and um, kind of smudge some bad color on there. So be careful, but it's pretty ideal to use your finger. And I do that often, it's quite convenient. A little bit of green here, kind of smearing this on. I'm using watercolor paper for this drawing. It's nice and heavy and has a good tooth. It's cold pressed, so it kind of grips this material and it doesn't let the media, the oil pastel slide around and it doesn't really wipe off the page like it would if you were doing it with just a regular piece of copy paper. It just like slides off of that. So you do want to get a, a paper with a little bit of tooth to it, a little bit of grip. Now you might think, oh, she's not pressing very hard. She didn't even get any red on there, but I know that I'm going to layer several colors in here and I want them to have access to the raw paper so that they adhere a little bit better to that surface. And if I just smash my red onto the surface, it gives it almost like a smooth slick feeling and the other colors don't 
sink in and and make it to that surface. So I, I spread them out and then I blend them that way. And you can see that they really do come together well and almost resonate just as one violet or red violet patch there in that shadow. Now I can add a little more red. You can always add more, but sometimes I feel like being conservative is a safe way to play it if you're just starting out. But trying something like this pear is a really good way to start. I wouldn't suggest starting with a, a portrait or or a image of, you know, something that you care deeply about. I would really experiment with something kind of vague or like a stock image like I'm using because you just don't want to have that kind of pressure going into a new media. Put a little brown on the stem. I'm going to leave a little gap because I feel like there's a highlight there. And I'm going to take off a little bit of this surface with this piece of plastic. It is from a baby food jar lid, which is random, but that's what the art room is for. It's a bunch of random stuff that you find uses for. And I'll show you, it's right here. It's a lid that I chopped up because I was tired of using my fingernail to scrape off this oil. And so I just chopped up some of these lids that have this edge and they work really well, but really a palette knife, anything you have around there would really work. So anything that scrapes will lift up this material and it basically takes it back down to that first layer. So if you want it to be really safe, you could make white your first layer and then you take it back to white. I just wanted less oil on there so that I could push some of this white highlight further. I'm excited about this part. It's the cast shadow and I know it's gonna have some purple in it and I'm gonna mix it with some blue also. So here's my first layer. This is just fun to play around with color when you're dealing with oil pastels because it's a pretty inexpensive media, but it lends itself to look so much like a painting. When I hang these in the hallway at school after we're finished with them, I would say nine out of 10 people who walk through the hall say, oh, I love the paintings you put out there. They just assume they're painted until they get a little closer and read the label that it's an oil pastel. And then they're like, what's an oil pastel? <laughs> and then I have to explain it. But either way, it looks like a painting. You even can blend these with a brush and I'll show you that in a minute. But if you're wondering about going into painting and you just don't want the cost of the startup, you wanna do something that's a little safer, maybe a little less expensive, this is a great way to scratch that itch if you have it. So oil pastels are just, I think, beautiful and the price is right, we like that. Now I wanna show you the second way you can blend. Here is an odorless mineral spirits by Speedball. I order it for the classroom because it has no fumes and it's easy to use. To blend oil, you can't use water, right? Because oil and water don't mix. So we use this and a little bit goes a long way. So once you have a teeny amount on your brush, like a clean brush, then you can move this oil around and it, it just blends it differently. When you blend with your finger, it doesn't go very far. When you blend with a little bit of turpenoid and your brush, it, it blends very far. It almost erases it. It almost lifts it back up off the paper. And since you can't get these oil pastels sharpened, the brush allows you to get a really fine detail where the actual pastel cannot. And I just have a little tiny bit in that little square dish. <laughs> I mean, you can barely tell it's in there. It's just a few drops. It's, it's not a lot, like a little puddle. So I don't use a ton of it. 
I think this jug will probably last me 10 years and that's in a classroom full of, you know, 25 students per period. So <laughs> it'll last for a while. You can also ball up some tissue, dab it in the turp, and use it to blend. If you don't like the streaky look that the brush gives you, just, or like a cotton ball or anything like that, just play with it, experiment. I have the benefit of having, you know, 125 students doing this and they're brilliant. Many times they're experimenting, so I have so much exponential experimentation going on that I can kind of bring to my channel and inform not only my students, but you guys too, and everybody will benefit. It looks like the background is blue. If I had to just say one color, I'd say it's blue. So you think, oh, well, in the world is she using red? Well, I think it looks a little more violet or purple. So I'm gonna push it a little further and suit my own taste. And I think it would be more fun if it if I just pushed red into it and make red the foundation and then just put a little blue over top of it. If you're just beginning, um, anytime you see like one color, try to use two, try to use three because oil pastels are made to be blended and merged together and layered. And you can see how, <laughs> how um, scribbly I put that on. I, if I was doing a graphite drawing, I would say, oh my goodness, do not have those directional lines. But because it's oil pastel and I know I'm gonna blend all that messiness out, um, I'm just enjoying scribbling like that. So um, don't let that freak you out. All that's gonna go away when I blend. It's gonna be all nice and soft. All right, I did some red, I did some blue, and I think I'm gonna add a little more red. You can always add more. And if you hate it, you can scrape it off, and then you can add more again. <laughs> it's glorious. All right, this is a pretty big space, so I'm gonna go back to that tissue dipped in the terpenoid because I want it to go a little quicker. Ooh, it looks good though. So fun. I love oil pastels. <laughs> they are just really gratifying. Now, I am doing this as a voiceover, so when you see me blend really fast, it's because I've sped it up, so don't let that scare you. I'm also not over blending. I don't want this all to be one solid color. I want it to have a little bit of expression in it, a little bit of the artist hand shown in it. So I'm gonna leave some of my mark making visible just because that is my preference. So if that's not your preference and you're using oil pastels and you want to smoothly blend things or, you know, lift up some of that excess, that is totally up to you. You are the artist and you can do however you would like. I'm making these choices based on my preferences. I did get a little bit of oil pastel under my pear. Do you see the little pink piece? I'll take care of that in a little bit. And here's another way you can blend. If you have a color that you've been using, you can just keep pressing until that color, maybe even this white, blends the rest of them together. So you can use the white to blend other color, you know, or the yellow or whatever color you're using. You can press so hard as you move across the surface of the paper that it blends it. Uh, one more coat of blue on here. Feeling a little too violet. I think I think I want to push it more towards the blue. I think this is Prussian blue. Now I need to go over my edges and I'm going to use this brush and terpenoid to do that. This odorless mineral spirits. And you can see that I'm pulling my bristles with the handle. 
my, bristle, my bristles will go where my handle leads them. And I'm just gonna clean up the edge and use the pastel that's already there to fill in some of these gaps. I also wanna cover up any mistakes that I made if I dropped a pastel on my paper, which I did right here. I'm just gonna cover that up since it's made to be layered. Just camouflage it till it goes away. The trouble is if you're wanting to keep a white background and you drop some oil pastel on there, it's, uh, it's harder to get out. Just blending with my finger back to my, back to the basics. If you're blending and it hurts your finger, you don't have enough oil pastel yet and the friction is going to burn your finger. Kind of work with the oil pastel and they'll take the cover off but then they'll wrap it like this with tissue paper just to keep their hands clean which i think is very smart and good common sense so you can always do that i end up breaking mine a lot because i have a lot of pressure so i'm not very careful with them but i love leaving a little bit of mark making visible with these Again, it's, it's my love for that painterly style that kind of shows through. I like seeing, seeing that artist hand in there. And that's the shadow that I need there. It was just a little too loud, so I had to knock it down a little bit. More Prussian blue right here. And I'm not gonna blend that. I think I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna carve away with my little plastic Gerber lid. Wipe that off. I don't want to reuse it. I'm just gonna pull away a little bit of that highlight right there. There we go. And then it's a really clean, sharp edge because I've used this plastic piece. Again, a palette knife would work really well. Well, thank you guys for being here. Our drawing is complete and I'm so tickled that you came to the channel. I hope that you liked it. I hope you learned something. If you did, please subscribe, give it a like, and I hope you'll come back for more videos. I'm slowly but surely adding as much content as I can to help my own classes and to help you guys, of course, to learn about all these art supplies and to have fun doing it. So I hope you have a blessed day and night and I hope to see you back.